Hello everyone and welcome back to the course of DBMS. In this video, we will be looking into the fundamentals of database systems. Now let's go through the outlines of this video. First, we will be discussing about what a data model is and also its categories. The first category of data model is the high level or conceptual data model. Then we have the representational or implementation data models and finally low level or physical data models. And then we will be looking at few terminologies that we need to familiarize with. So moving on, first let us see what a data model is and why we require it. One of the most important characteristics of database approach is that it provides data abstraction. Now what is data abstraction? It is the hiding of complex details or details that are not needed by the database users. Now to achieve this data abstraction, we have something called as data model. Data model is a collection of concepts used to describe the structure of the database, like specifying the data types, constraints, etc. Most data models include a set of basic operations to manipulate the data in the database, like retrieval of data from the database or updates on the data in the database. In addition to these basic operations, data model also includes concepts to specify the behavior of a database application. And so it allows the database designer to specify a set of valid user-defined operations. So this is an introduction to data models and why we require it that is to achieve data abstraction. Now we can categorize these data models based on the types of concepts they use to describe the structure of a database. The first category high level or conceptual data model provides concepts to present data in a way or that are close to the way many users see or perceive data. The conceptual data model uses concepts such as entities, attributes, and relationships. Entities represent real-world object or concept, like for example, employee, student, etc. These are all entities as they represent real-world object. Next, attributes, they further describe an entity, like the student name, role number, etc. And then we have relationships, which is an association or a link among two or more entities. Like for example, an employee works on many projects, so a relationship exists between the employee and each project. So this is about the first category of data model, the high level or the conceptual data model. The next category is the low level or the physical data model. This model provides concepts that describe how data is stored in the computer by representing information like the format, the access path, etc. An access path is a structure that makes search for a particular database record efficient. Or in other words, I can say access path is a structure for efficient searching of a particular database record. This is the second category, the low level or the physical data model. The next category of data model is representational or implementation data model. There are three data models that come under this category. The first is a relational data model. Then we have the network data model and the hierarchical model. And representational data models represent data using record structures. And that is why representational data models are sometimes called record-based data models. So these are the categories of data models. Next is the terminologies that we need to familiarize ourselves with. The first one is database schema. Database schema is a description of a database. In our first video, we have seen that metadata is also a description of a database. Now, what is the difference between a metadata and a schema? Metadata is data about data, or in other words, it describes the data in the database, whereas schema is just a plan or a layout or a blueprint of the database. A schema is a subset of metadata or it is one of the components of metadata and a diagrammatic representation of schema is called a schema diagram or in other words it is the displayed schema and this is how a schema diagram would look like and each object within the schema is called a schema construct like for example the tables in the database student course etc these are called as schema construct 
A schema isn't supposed to change frequently. But suppose if we want to add a new data item, say the date of birth, to the student schema, then that is called as schema evolution. But the data in the database can change frequently and so the data in the database at a particular moment in time or at a particular instant is called as a database state or an instance or snapshot. When we define a new database, the database state is empty because it has no data. When the database is populated or filled with the initial data, that's when we have the initial database state. From then on, once we start updating the database, we get different database state. So at any point in time, the data in the database is the current state of the database. So these are few other terminologies that we need to know. With this, we come to the end of this video. Hope you all have understood the fundamental concepts of database systems, which includes the data model, its categories and few terminologies. Thank you.